Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. Over the years, I have turned many different goblets, different woods, different styles. I wanted a simple goblet for today, but let's let's see what we can could do. This is a uh, green turned goblet out of a branch. This is a larger branch, green turned. It warped, but it also cracked here on the bottom. This was dry wood, but natural edge. This is another dry wood, but a single piece, kind of single piece and more single piece here. Uh, single piece happens then to be a almost a test of skill because you're hanging out a long way from the lathe and you have to have this risk of the stem breaking while you're turning it. So single piece and some walnut. And then we get to three-piece goblets, which uh, very degrees of success here, or even two very complex ones with a swirl cut into the bowl, which I th I've rather enjoyed that one, but I wanted a simple one for today. So how about that we turn this three-piece goblet. It's got a nice bowl, but it's still not so big that it is hanging out and causing problems and big risk. It's got a stem, but with the stem being a separate piece and not so long, the risk is much less. And then we can do a good job also on the base instead of one that is just simply flat and sanded. So let's turn this three-piece goblet. After roughing this walnut between centers, the only things left to do are to cut tenons on both ends of the cylinder to fit my chuck jaws and to decide how much wood I want the, to the goblet bowl. Since parting the wood into two pieces is dicey on the lathe, I decided to take it to the bandsaw. But cutting a cylinder on the bandsaw is also very dicey. The blade could catch the start of the cut and rotate the wood out of control or similarly at the exit. However, I clamped the cylinder with a wood clamp to prevent the wood from spinning. With this easy precaution, the cut is easy and safe. I do not need excitement here. Back at the lathe now with the wood mounted to a chuck. I first measure for my target depth and mark this on the hand mounted drill. I like to leave the tape ends out to sweep shavings while marking the end of the drill. Then just a tad of cleanup with the spindle gouge and I can drill quickly to depth. Now for the fun part. Sometimes I use a box scraper for this situation. This time, however, looks perfect for spindle hollowing. Especially with the center hole already a void, I can cut from the center hole outward to the perimeter with the flute barely open. The bottom wing peels the wood very nicely. The first inch of depth is a breeze, but as I go deeper there is more vibration and I have to pay attention that my back hand is at the very end of the handle. Then better yet anchor it against my body. I clean up the straight sides with the box scraper to make sure they are straight. Finally, my round nose scraper rounds out the bottom. This goes okay despite being so far over the tool rest. Then why not sand and apply finish to the inside while it is easy. Now it is time to tool down the exterior. I have a face plate on my threaded live center to support the wood. I have seen others use all kinds of support here including a tennis ball. However, I like this approach since I do have a threaded live center. Without some support here the wood would vibrate more and quite possibly mimic a UFO. Neither is acceptable. I frequently stop the lathe and check wall thickness with my finger calipers before moving on. Why not at least one check with official calipers? Then move on to form the bottom of the bowl and where it will interface with the stem. Since I am not turning a one-piece goblet, 
I need enough wood at the base to avoid short grain at the bottom center and wood for a mortise to accept a tenon from the stem. Plus, I do not have to waste a lot of wood turning everything down to the stem diameter. I sand and apply finish here also. There is only a little bit at the very bottom that I will have to redo later. I have fiddled a lot with various ways to hold a partially completed project while finishing the extreme end. Ever since I first used these on my square box, I have developed a lot of variations of the pin jaws. They are good for light duty work. The bolt provides the strength of steel and attachment to the chuck jaw base. While I 3D print mine, they are also easily turned from wood. This set has a, has a platform the goblet lip can sit on and a reverse taper to accommodate the rounded goblet bowl. Without the reverse taper, the goblet would not stay put. With the goblet mounted with the pin jaws and centered by the original divot in, with the life center, it does not take much to waste off the old tenon. Then shape the remaining part of the bottom and drill for the mortise. Then touch up the sanding and finishing. Now for the base. The other part of the original wood cylinder is mounted to the chuck. I will not need all that wood. I'll save some for a later project. It does not take much to shape and drill the base since there is no distraction as in a one-piece goblet of this bowl and stem. Sand and finish here also while I'm the lathe. There's no better way to sand and finish a lathe project. However, I incorporate a small edge to serve as a tenon for a future mount. Now the base is mounted with that ledge tenon. Since the size matches closely to the jaw capacity, there is little risk of damage. After cleaning off the bottom with a spindle gouge, I cut a small recess with a box scraper. Then sand and finish. I can do a much better job on the bottom of the base than when I turn a single piece goblet. Now I have a small piece of scrap maple mounted between centers for the stem. I like contrast on a three-piece goblet, such as with this maple against the walnut. The first task is to cut quarter-inch tenons on both ends of the stem. This is easier on the live center end, since the live center interferes less with than the stem-style drive center. After reducing the diameter, I finish up with a 5 eighths and then one quarter inch sharpened end wrenches. These leave tenons slightly oversized, which work well by either drilling out with a one size larger drill or just pressure if the wood can tolerate it. Then continue to shape the stem. At first, I thought to leave a bead at the center. Then, since it was not quite centered and could be a distraction anyway, I cut it off and went for a more simple design, which is perfect for this goblet. I did have one problem here. The wood holding the drive center teeth splintered off, letting the wood spin easily. I could not clamp the tailstock more for fear of splitting the tenon on that end. So I had to be careful and take very small bites with the spindle gouge and ultimately the skew. This completes my three-piece goblet of walnut and maple finished with wipe on poly. Three-piece goblets are significantly easier than one-piece goblets. They also have a higher success rate since there is little risk that the stem breaks and ruins the whole project. Using multiple woods also provides visual interest. The downside is that there are fewer bragging rights. Meanwhile, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. I hate to nag, but are you wearing yours?